Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my favorites for the month of December. Um, typically in January, I do um, like a best and worst of beauty um, for the whole year of everything I've tried. Um, so I will work on that for January. But this is just going to be some things that I'm reaching for all the time. Um, most of it is new. There are a few repeats, but again, um, when I love something, I just keep using it. Even certain seasonal changes, um, I will come back to a product that I've talked about previously because I need a little more uh, heavy hitters in the drier months. Today's video is in collaboration with Sephora. I've been loving working with them um, because they let me pick and say whatever I want about any products that they carry, which I like. It fits in uh, to my theme of my channel, so. As always, there will be timestamps below if you guys want to skip ahead. Um, I'm going to talk about, I have more skincare picks than makeup, I believe. Yeah. So um, I will have those timestamps below if you guys just want to skip around to certain areas. And a reminder, as always, if you guys are not a member of the Sephora Beauty Insider program, you guys should sign up. It's free to join, which just keeps track of all the money you spend, which gives you points, which then you can um, trade those points in for deluxe samples, makeovers, anything like that. And the higher your tier, the earlier head start you get towards um, their insider events that have discounts, which is great. And typically your discount is a little higher. I will leave a link below to their Beauty Insider program, how to sign up, and I will also leave a link to the benefits and their reward bazaar. I hoard my points and I trade them in for the gift cards. <laughs> That's what I like to do a month. Full disclosure, again, this did not have to be brand, product, or price specific. It could be anything I want that they carry. And just in case I forget to mention it, all products that were sent to me for consideration by each respective brand will be marked with a star in my description box. And as always, I will have all pertinent information on the side of the screen here in case I forget to mention anything um, that's important. So first up, let's do skincare. I have been using this Belief, this Cleansing Gel Oil Enriched. I've mentioned this previously. In the winter months when there's forced um, heat especially, my skin gets really dry. Um, it can happen in the summer too with the recycled like air conditioning and things like that, but especially when it's dry, um, my body kind of like shrivels up. So I don't want to use especially any harsh cleansers. So I love, this is a pure liquid, it's not a jelly. I prefer either um, an oil or a jelly-based cleanser. Um, I use this almost every morning. This one and one other um, jelly cleanser I really like, but this just feels, leaves my skin really hydrated, nice. I pump a little of this, I put this on dry skin and then I go over with a microfiber washcloth and wipe it off. And then when I sit down to do the rest of my skincare, my skin already feels nice and supple. I almost feel like I could go right on with my makeup without even doing any skin prep because this does not dry me out. So I really, really like this and I highly recommend it. Now I have two balms to talk about. Um, not like a makeup removing balm, more like a recovery balm. This is the Ren Evercom Overnight Recovery Balm. Um, their whole Evercom line is meant for um, sensitive skin, those with rosacea, but anybody can use it. This is so nice. I use this as the last step in my skincare and it really like locks everything in and it, it doesn't really have like a fragrance to it. It's just really, really nice and supple and a little goes a long way. It's basically oil in a solid form. Um, when you put this on, it's not sticky. It just gives a ton of hydration to the skin. I had this little spot on my um, stomach here that was really like, like a little weird random dry patch. It just came out of nowhere and I used this on there and it went away. If you're someone that struggles with dry skin or you're going, um, you're using a strong retinol or even Accutane, something like this will be a godsend to you. I love a lot of Ren skincare. Um, they don't put a lot of like filler and crap in their products, which I appreciate. Um, so this one is really nice. And then the other one that I love that you've heard me talk about before, this is the Pharmacy Honey Savior. Same thing, a little goes a long way with this because it is very slick. So where I use this is on the corners of my nose, on that little uh, crack or fold on my chin. If I'm having dry skin anywhere else, you could put a whole layer of this over your face. Um, the Manuka Honey in here is going to help as well. What I love those for too is if I'm snowboarding or anywhere where I know I can get wind burn on my face, if I'm using retinol products um, where I can get dry and flaky, love that. But what I would recommend is you can't pick between the two. I would say go get a sample of each one and see. I will say the pharmacy one is a little more slick. It feels a little more um, oily and when I look at my hand it's a little more oily and it does have a little bit more of a stick to it than the Ren one does. 
Next, you guys know I love a good exfoliating acid. Um, I love acids. I have been testing these First Aid Beauty, the facial radiance pads. I like them because, again, I, I love the Dr. Dennis Gross ones as well, the extra strength alpha beta peels. I like these. They're more cost effective than the alpha beta peels, which are, again, still nice. I like those because I can just toss those little packets in my bag when I'm traveling. Um, this isn't difficult to travel with either. It just comes in a big stack of them. I love these. Um, they're pretty foolproof to use. You don't have to like measure out the amount of products. You just take a pad, rub it all over your face. Um, this will help you chemically exfoliate your face and give you a nice glow. Next is a product I really like the results I got of. The only thing that bothers me about it is they added dye onto this. Um, so this bok choy, So I can't even say this word, I'm gonna put it in the screen here because I don't wanna butcher it, um, is a flower. And so this is basically an alternative to uh, retinols. Uh, some people's skin just can't tolerate retinol. So this basically has this um, flower, which is, they're saying does the same thing as retinol without the downtime and AHAs in here. So uh, think about this as more of like, almost like an acid. Um, my skin was really nice, really smooth, but again, they added um, some violet dyes in here. It comes out a little purple. So that's the only thing I would change about that. This so I would say um, if you're okay with the added dye in here, it comes out this purple color. Let me show you, see that? If you're okay with that, um, and I mean, when you rub it in, I don't see it on my skin anymore. I just don't like, I'm just, why did they add it? Well, it's because the flower that they're using as the alternative to uh, retinol is a purple color. So I think that they were trying to drive that home, but again, I think it could have done without. Next up is the brand new Drunk Elephant Retinol Cream. I really, really, really like this. I've been testing it for about a little more than three weeks now. So this is a 1% vegan retinol. Um, not all retinols are vegan. Um, a lot are derived from animal sources. This one is not. You're gonna get one ounce of product. The price is, um, I feel, a little steep for one ounce. It's $74, but I really, really like the results I'm getting from this. It's not as harsh as like a different gel or um, any prescription that you could get because this does have other ingredients that are gonna help soothe it. This is made in the USA. It is vegan and cruelty-free, which is kind of hard to find. If you're brand new to retinols, you might wanna start uh, really slow with this or start with something a little less aggressive. So retinol converts in the body to retinol with an AL and uh, retinoic acid. The difference between retinol and retinoids is that over-the-counter products contain a form of retinol and ester forms, which is basically vitamin A derivatives. Um, so you'll see some of the names I'll put on the screen here. That's how you know it's a derivative. Those need to be converted um, to retinoid acid by the skin at a cellular level in order for the skin to use it. And the more conversions it takes to get the ester form uh, to the retinoic acid form, the weaker it is. Biochemically, uh, retinoids and retinols do exactly the same thing. One's just gonna get you there way faster than the other, but you also may have some adverse side effects um, opposed to little bits that you ramp up, opposed to anybody that's gone through that red and kind of peeling and raw phase, people think, that they're having a bad reaction to it, but that's what it's supposed to do. You're gonna go through like a kind of crappy month typically. There's a misconception that retinols are um, exfoliators. They're not. They don't work the same as um, AHAs or BHAs or any chemical exfoliants like that. Basically, um, what you could think of this is, is like vitamin A, it's it's causing inflammation in your skin. It's sending like an SOS to send help and it's speeding up your cellular turnover so you're having fresh new skin. Um, while your skin adjusts though, you will probably get peely, you will get dry, you will feel tight. Um, I first started with a prescription strength from my dermatologist and I, like a week in, thought it felt like I had horrible sunburn um, and I wasn't avoiding like the sides of my nose or the, this right here on my chin and that got super red and tender. Um, and my dermatologist just told me like, stick with it, get through the month and it'll be smooth sailing from there. So this contains a plant-based carotenoid antioxidant, which is called xanthrophil. That will help fight free radicals. Um, it also has protective skin benefits. It contains uh, skin protecting peptides, fatty acids. Uh, it has vitamin F, uh, marula, passion fruit, apricot, jojoba oils to help offset any potential dryness or flaking triggered, triggered by the retinol. 
the application on here says it can be used morning and night uh, to use start once or twice a week and then adjust according to your skin's needs. I've had a few questions about this. Okay, so retinols are gonna work best when you use them most regularly. When I started my skincare journey of trying to transform my skin into like the dry and patchy and flaky mess that it was, um, I used it all the time. I feel like um, in about a year, my skin started to plateau where I wasn't noticing any changes anymore because I mean my skin got really good. But what I like to do is I'll cycle between retinols and acids. I typically don't use them at the same time because my skin is dry and it can be too much. So I will go through a phase where I won't use any acids. I've just been using this for a month and then I'll come back sometimes like once I feel like, okay, I've gotten where I wanna go, I've plateaued or whatever it is, I just switch it up. I, I do test a lot of products this does say that you can cocktail all their products together. Um, and when they say that, I don't mind mixing products, but I don't wanna pump them all in my hand, mix them together and put them on my face. I just feel like, to me, it doesn't seem like it can be as effective. It, you know, your skin can only absorb so much at a time. And even though you're putting it on in layers, you think what's the difference of putting it on all at once. But um, I don't know, I just, I don't like to mix them all in my hand together and put them all on at once. If you have sensitive skin, I don't think that this is gonna be for you. Um, I would say something like this that's going to be like an alternative to a retinol. Or again, get a sample of this and start really slow. I was actually shocked that Drunk Elephant came out with a retinol because um, Tiffany was kind of like against um, retinols, I believe, in the beginning. But just like we've talked about um, before, you know, technology and studies and all of those things are ever evolving and changing. And even, you know, and even brands uh, change their mind about things sometimes. I'm happy to see that they came out with that. I'm really happy with the results I'm seeing. I've noticed that I haven't gotten, now it could be because I've already gotten my skin to where I like it, but I haven't noticed any dryness with that, which I'm kind of shocked, and I think it's because of the other added ingredients that it comes in. It doesn't leave my skin, it's this yellow tint, it doesn't leave my skin feeling tight. It actually feels moisturized after I put it on. Some of the um, retinol like prescription gels and things can kind of, after you put them on, maybe feel a little tight. What I How I like to apply this is I like to wash my face. I apply this only at night. It says you can use it morning and night. Um, I, To me, I think that that's a bit overkill, uh, so I'd only use it at night. I do a double cleanse. I use a balm to remove my makeup. I use my Clarisonic with a facial wash. I let my face, I pat it dry and then let it completely dry um, because any water on your skin is going to drive ingredients deeper into your skin, which then increases the possibility of irritation. So let make sure your skin is completely dry I apply a pea-sized amount um, rubbed in my skin. I let my active work for about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, then I will go on with my Belief True Cream Moisturizing Balm and my oil, just moisturize. That's all I do on the nights that I use retinol products. And then in the morning, I can do um, whatever else I want, but I'll typically avoid acids. Now there are some people that can mix all of that. I just notice for me and my skin that I'll overdo it, and then that's when I'll start getting dry and flaky. Retinol will do more for your skin than any other ingredient. Um, however, like I love acids. Acids are more immediate. Retinol is going to take a while to see the results. Um, and it can be kind of, uh, like I said, at least a painful month while your skin adapts to it. Just hang in there. And again, a little does go a long way. Um, the only thing that gave me pause about this at first is when I saw the price. Um, but again, this will do more for your skin long term than pretty much anything else. Again, but the results will not be immediate unless your skin is already accustomed to it. Uh, in the future, I'll do a whole video on retinols, um, kind of go over the different types and derivatives and what they're said to do and some of the studies. I'm on like my sixth cup of coffee. It's at night after work and I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> Next up is a brand new product for me. This is the Glow Recipe Avocado Melt Sleeping Mask. So they had a watermelon um, sleeping mask. I didn't care for that. I felt like it made my skin kind of tight and dry feeling. This doesn't do that. This is really, really nice. It, it states that 74% of this formula is all avocado based. It's coming from um, the flesh, the extract, the oil, and the butter of avocado. Basically, it's gonna help reduce inflammation and lock in moisture. So if you are someone with very sensitive skin, this is for you. I don't see on the ingredient list any added fragrance. Um, it does have 
a very light fragrance. Um, I had heard someone mention that they thought it smelled really strong, which I'm like, mine doesn't smell like that. Um, I'm not sure. This does have Manuka honey in it as well, and it also has um, PHA, which is a gentle exfoliator. The way I like to use this is put a thin layer on um, if I am using like a Retin-A or anything like that, or if my skin is dry, I apply a thin layer, um, I sleep in it, and then I'll just wash my face in the morning. I don't want it like really thick. And it does come with this little scoop. Um, I just use it back of my nail or I have some other scoops I use. Next up is a great deal. You guys know that I love the Believe True Cream Moisturizing Balm. So they have this Merry Merry Moisturizers, which I put it in here so I can make sure I touch on all of the things again. So I've been using this. Get out of here. Okay, so for the same price as just their True Cream Moisturizing Balm, you're going to get these other two items as well. So this is um, a smaller size of the Moisturizing Eye Balm, which I actually like. I do have the full size. I like it too. You guys know my stance on eye creams if you've been watching me for any length of time. Um, I don't think that they're necessary, but some people just love them. Um, this is a nice one. And then it also comes with this Aqua Bomb Sleeping Mask, which is kind of like a pudding. So this should be your last step in all your skincare. So you could put all of these products on, then you wanna put a layer of this on, sleep with it, and then remove this. And it's supposed to just lock everything in, make everything really smooth and nice. Um, so again, for the same cost of just the moisturizer, you can get this. It says it's at a $60 value. This is limited edition for a holiday. My favorite moisturizer ever. You guys have been asking me as well about the uh, Pete Miracle creams too. Okay, so this one is significantly more expensive than this one. I think about by $20. Now, this one has a heavier silicone feel to it. Um, I have seen people say that they prefer this one. I have tested these both back to back and I always find when I go without this one, I miss it the most. Um, this one again is nice, but I still prefer this one. If you like um, more of a slip feel to your moisturizer, you'll like this one. And the eye cream is nice as well. I actually prefer this eye cream though um, because of that texture. And as always, I can't live without uh, mixing that with my fresh sea berry oil, especially in the winter um, when my skin gets really dry. I cannot say enough good things about those two combos. Um, I almost wish I could just dump the oil right in there. I mean, it's not a pain in the butt to mix it myself, but um, ooh, my hand feels so soft now. <laughs> it's um, not a pain to mix it myself, and I don't even know like if it, it would probably separate um, if I just dumped them right in together. But I love these two things together. Next, you guys may notice um, I have been tan since I've move down here I guess uh, when it, not right away um can you see this can you see my knuckle do you see how this is bruised okay so I have a million marks like this all over my legs and when I'm wearing pencil skirts for work or I'm going to events or whatever it is and I'm wearing dresses or skirts or anything like that my legs I looked like someone was hitting me with like in the shins with baseball bats I never worked out previously so I never was really running into things as much and this is just something I did this morning putting weights away I pinched my skin I hit my shins on things Graceful like a gazelle, I guess. Um, I have marks like this all over my legs. So to just kind of even everything out, I have been sunless tanning. So I use something on my body and then I don't like to use the same thing that I use on my body on my face because I find that it can clog my pores and I get blemishes, I notice when I use that. So what I've been using are the Isle of Paradise drops. Now I have on the dark one right now which isn't super dark, but what I like about it is that I can adjust the drops. So right now, they say to put in between one and 12 drops. I have six drops on my face mixed in with, I like to use a more of like a water-based moisturizer. So I use the Dr. Jart Water Fuse. And what I do is I'll put like a scoop of that in just like a little container. I'll put the drops in, I'll mix it around with a little spatula, like a little facial spatula. I put it on, I rub it in, make sure to push it back like into your hairline so you don't have like this weird line. Uh, wash your hands immediately and let it dry and then I go to bed. So in the morning, I'm trying not to use exfoliating acids or anything like that. Um, I'm, even the vitamin C, I'm using that at night. So what I'll do at night is if it's a night that I know that I'm using this stuff is I will use that as my last step and I won't even put on the True Cream Moisturizing Balm on top of that because it's almost like you don't want to get it wet just like any spray tan. Once it dries you want it to like set overnight. So um, I just sleep with that on and I don't get any like coloring on my sheets. You guys know I'm weird about my sheets. I have 
white sheets and I don't want anything like if <laughs> you guys watch on Instagram where I like wear a sweatsuit with like my pants tucked in and I look a bit ridiculous. But I like doing that just because it helps again with marks like this so I don't have them all over my legs. It, it blends them in a little more when they're all over my shins anyway. I don't mind my natural skin color at all, um, being I am pretty fair on the light and fair side. Um, I just don't like seeing those marks all over my legs. It just looks odd to me. Or I'll have to wear pants all the time. These are available in three shades. So um, if you do want, if you're super fair, I would get the light ones. I have all three. I actually went to the store to buy the dark ones um, myself. They did send me, my friend gave me the light and medium ones. I like the dark because you can control it. So if you just want kind of like a lighter color, you can just put one drop in. I like those. And again, I would recommend to mix it with um, like a, a thinner based moisturizer to make sure you get even coverage. This is not a moisturizer for my dry skin. Uh, the Dr. Jart one that I can use as a standalone product. I only like it to mix in these things. Next up, you guys have heard me talk about this. This is L the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. They currently have a holiday version out. It's $20, um, it's made in Korea. This is the berry one. It has a really nice scent. These last a long time too because it's a really deep pot. I like to use a lip brush with these. Um, it does come with a little um, kind of silicone like spatula, but since I typically will toss this into my purse or something, I just have a little lip brush that has a cap on it that I just keep with me. And this definitely helps keep my lips hydrated, again, especially in the winter. I even like to just put a lip liner on and put this on top for the day, and it works really well. Do you hear that noise? You probably can hear the noise because I have a really sensitive microphone. Sorry, my dishwasher is going. Um, next is something I picked up recently. This is the Sephora brand. This is a Kiwi Lip Scrub. So they have some balms and then two scrubs are offered. Um, there's a honey one and a kiwi one. And basically, it's just a really rough, looks like a lipstick or something but I use this in circular motions on my lips I splash them off and then I lock in um, moisture with the balm I really like this it makes it so um, my glosses and my lipsticks go on really smooth I don't like it my lips to look like they're dry and flaky which in the winter they can absolutely get really dry and flaky I can get that like kind of mad dog rimmer on the inside now let's talk about foundations um, this is one of those things in the winter too along with your skincare I feel like is what's going to change the most typically. So typically in the summer people like a little more of um, like a matte foundation because you don't want to be somewhere where you're super hot and then your foundation is really dewy and it's kind of moving all over your face. So during the winter I especially love the Hourglass Illusion Skin Tint. This doesn't have a huge range of shades. Um, it does have 12 shade offerings but they don't go very deep. I wish that they would expand upon. This is really good if you have dry skin. Um, if you have oily skin I would avoid this because I think it will be too luminous or radiant finish for you. Next you guys have heard me talk about all the time is the Natasha Denona Face Glow Foundation. I love this foundation. I'm in shade 40 even right now with my fake tan because this one was even a little touch too dark for me before I'd have to mix in a pump of 10. The way I recommend putting this on is like always I brush it on a thin layer with a brush and go in with a beauty blender and blend it in. If I go in right with a brush and try to swirl it on I get streaks because it's almost like a jelly oil kind of and if I go on with a beauty blender I notice it gets patchy. I love love this foundation. It it looks beautiful in person. I just love this foundation. Right now what I'm wearing is the Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour Wear Hydrating Foundation. You guys have heard me talk about this before. I have purchased this in three shades um, because when I do sunless tanner, I don't wanna have to buy every single foundation that I love that's my normal skin color all over again in different shades. Um, so I just pick one that I have been really loving and then I'll get other shades in that. So when I'm at my darkest like fresh drops or like spray tan I'm a 2.4 which is still light. Um, a 2.4 if I'm kind of like it's exfoliating off I'm a 2.12 and my natural color um, is a 1.1. So I, I find if I get the darkest one of the darkest spray tan I ever get I can even start to mix these to find the perfect shade and I'll you get the point. <laughs> Um, I love this foundation. It's very long wearing. Um, I feel like it reads very well on camera. It doesn't oxidize. It lasts a really long time. I like it. Next, let's talk about concealers. So this is a brand new concealer um, that I've been testing for, I don't know, about a month. This is the First Aid Beauty Hello Fab Bendy Avocado Concealer. Very odd name, um, but I like this a lot. 
what they're calling bendy is it's, it has a technology that helps move with your skin. So it's not supposed to settle in fine lines and it's not supposed to crease underneath your eyes. They do only have seven shades that they offer, but they are a little more self-adjusting. The finish on this is what they're calling uh, a natural luminous. It's vegan and cruelty free. This has been an excellent concealer and it is buildable coverage. They were calling it, I believe, full coverage. I think I would call this medium to full that you could build up, but I really like this. But I only have it in the number two shade. This is what I am naturally when I'm at my 1.1. So when I've been using my spray tan and stuff, I can't use this because it's too light and I don't like to highlight with concealer anymore. You guys have heard me talk about a bunch. Um, this is the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer. So when I'm spray tan like this, what I do is I put a couple dots of this underneath my eye, and then I also go in with the uh, Laura Mercier, the Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Concealer. This is 4N, which is super dark on my natural skin without anything. So basically, if I have a brand new spray tan on, I'm only using this because this is the darkest concealer that I own, and then as I start fading, I will go in and mix a little bit of the Born This Way. So I'll put like two dots of this, two dots of the Born This Way, and blend it in, and it's the perfect match. I love both of these consistencies, and they wear really well. Next up is the Benefit Balm Ass Brows by Desi Perkins. Um, so, I have a little notes on the back. <laughs> Full disclosure, I do really like Desi. Um, I think she's super sweet, really nice, hardworking. I did see some people mentioned that they thought this was just a rebranded um, brow kit that they already had for more money. And I looked at all the brow kits that they offer and they're not the same. Um, you are getting a full size of the foolproof powder for, that's two grams. You are getting a full size of the Precisely My Brow Pencil and you're getting a full size of the High Brow Highlight Pencil and you're getting a full size of the 24 hour Brow Setter Gel. And then you get a mini Cabrow Pomade. Plus it comes in this nice box and then you have a really nice mirror in here on the products right in there. And then I will show you the packaging. What I forgot, and you also get this dual ended brush in there. So the value on that is $126 when you do the math out um, and you're obviously saving money if you get it in the kit. So um, all her packaging comes in the rose gold. So I'm going to show you the only difference, the only product that's not full size is the Cabrow, which is their brow pomade. So here is what it normally looks like. And then here's the mini. In this cap, there's a little brush. So if you want to click it on top like that, you can do that. Some people like the shorter handle brush. You can just use it however you want like that. It does fit in here. The brush that it comes with will fit if you put it straight down in there too. But I find, um, since I don't wanna go too heavy handed in, I just go in actually with a small kind of like wing liner brush to just do the little brow strokes. Now what I will say is when I got this, um, the original Cabral, when I was uh, testing some of these products, this one I did purchase, these do tend to feel like they dry up a lot quicker than something like the ABH uh, Brow Pomade. What I do is I just put a drop of facial oil in here and I mix it around and it's good as new. You don't want to overdo it because you don't want it sliding all over your face. Um, you still want it to stay put. And I prefer a little more of a drier consistency anyway because again, it's not like a Sharpie all over my face. So the only mini product that you're getting out of that kit is this. So I do think it's a good deal. Um, this is the first time I have tried their brow setter, which I actually really, really like this. And I have been um, using their Precisely My Brow for the tail end of my eyebrows. I've never used their powder, so I'm still using the ABH brow stencil in this, the full size. And what I do is, so it shows you like the front part of your brow should be the lighter color, and then the tail should be the deeper color. That's what I have on my brows today. And when I first started going in with the lighter one, I'm like, I don't think that this is gonna be dark enough, but that's, that's a good thing. I can go in and then do the brow strokes with the pencil. And there actually is a card that comes in here that'll um, explain how Desi does her brows. So um, I just followed that. And I like how they come out. Um, it's also the first time that I have tried the highbrow highlighting pencil. So after I've been doing my brows, I go through and then I just blend that in and I've been really liking it. Um, the only thing I wasn't a huge fan of is the brush. Um, just because I'm really specific on brow brushes I like and uh, spoolies. It's not a bad one at all. It's a beautiful color. Um, it just wasn't my favorite out of any brushes I've ever tried. This is limited edition. And what I like about it too is she mixed some colors in to give you dimension. So not all one kit is all one shade. The pencil is number four. The 
pomade is number four, but then the powder is number three. I saw these um, in Sephora on the, like on a little end cap there, and I was looking around and I'm like, how do you tell which one is which? And then right on the side here, it'll say medium warm. So since I know I'm number four on the pencil and in the pomade, then I got this kit and then I just got shade number three for the um, brow powder too. I really do like this kit. And I'll be the first one to say, um, I know they had, did have like some collabs that came out um, a while ago and basically it was just the same exact products that they already make. It just had someone's face on it, which was like, okay. <laughs> I don't know if the price was the same or not. Um, if the price was the same, that stuff doesn't bother me, but if they like jacked it up, then that'd be like, that's not cool. <laughs> Uh, but that is a different kit and you are getting more than one shade just throughout all the products. Um, one of the products will be a different shade to give you some dimension. Next um, is a blush. So you guys know I love the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blushes. Um, once I have like the spray tan on, I do need a deeper blush. This is my favorite one from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Sex on Fire. So what you're supposed to do is kind of swirl your brush and take this lighter shade and like sweep it up over your cheekbones and then you're supposed to take the middle and just put it on the apple of your cheeks. I really, really love this color. I typically like peaches and plum blushes and sometimes corals too, but um, I really love this and you're getting a lot of product in here. Let's talk about highlights. Um, so I talked about this Amrezi highlighter um, when it first initially launched and this is still my same one because they last a very long time because you're getting a lot of product in here unless you love to bathe. I'd be curious if anybody has hit pan on this, please tag me because I'm always fascinated. I'm like, where are you putting this? <laughs> everywhere, everywhere because there's a lot of product in here. Um, so this was limited edition. They brought it back for the holidays. It's $28 and you're getting nine grams of product. I love the finish on this. I'm typically not a fan of gold highlighters, but this is like a um, light gold, almost not rose gold or like a platinum, but it's not super yellow. So it doesn't look jaundice on me. Um, I'm wearing it today. I think it's beautiful. You just pick a little up with the brush. This is my favorite highlight brush too right now. This is the Sephora number 98 brush I've talked about before. Um, the bristles just have perfect give to help blend in and not get a harsh line. Love both of these. So while I'm tan especially, I like using um, a little more of a warm highlight, a little go more gold, which I typically um, like more icy pink highlights on myself anyway, or peachy ones. What I'm wearing on my eyes today is the Viseart Libertine palette. I've been reaching for this a lot. At first when I looked at it, I was like, hmm, what an odd mix of colors. I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about it. In this palette, you're getting nine shades. You're getting five mattes and four shimmers or satin like finishes. This purple right here doesn't go on as vibrant as it looks in the pan. That's my only critique of this, but it makes it more wearable. Um, I do have it up in my crease. It almost looks a little darker once you put it on, but I find the color combos that you can get from this pretty versatile. Um, I right now have the this brown color as a transition. I have the purple in my crease. Then I went on um, the like outer two thirds of my eye with this purple. I went on the inner um, third with this shimmer color. I have this in my tear duct, this on my brow bone highlight. Um, and I took a little bit of this blue and I patted it over to kind of deepen that up. And um, oh, and this on the outside V2. And then I have this I smoked out under my lash line and then I put the blue underneath. I really, really love this palette. Um, I've been getting a lot of use out of it. And last but certainly not least, our lips. Um, so again, you guys have heard me talk about this all the time. I love a natural or like a your lips, but kind of better or even your lip shade color pencil. Um, you can see I've used the crap out of this. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip Cheat lip liner. I'll put that on um, the outside of my lips and then Fenty came out with a new gloss bomb which I have on today. It's called Fussy. So the original one I loved, um, this is my second one of this. This was just called uh, Fenty Glow. This is more of like a rose tone. Then they came out with this one um, that really didn't have any color to it. It was just um, like an iridescent sheen and now this Fussy which I love like pink shimmers too. So it has that really nice peach vanilla scent to it. Hold on, let me look in my mirror. I just find like with the big, with the big wand too, it's easy to get like one swipe coverage. It smells nice, it feels nice. I don't get any of those stringy little pieces. Um, I've purchased all of these and all the glosses that she probably comes out with, I'll continue to purchase because I just find them so flattering on everybody's skin tone too. They just look really nice and they make your lips look nice and juicy. It's not to love. And then hold your horses. 
I have a Too Faced product. Um, I've shown these. I've been doing a lot of more Instagram stories, although I've been off of uh, Instagram for some time now. Just end of year, I thought would be a lot calmer, uh, just because for the holidays, we already have to have all of that stuff in production sent out long ago, but now we're already planning for next year's or even further out. So um, it's just been kind of chaotic and with everything going on. So um, I've been slacking on social media. Sorry guys, work first though. Um, I adore this lip gloss. This is Sunset Crush. This is part of their Rich and Dazzling collection. Um, this gloss in particular, all of them are beautiful, but this one is my favorite. Uh, they have six different shades. They're so sparkly. Um, they're just, they're beautiful. And I don't get flecks of glitter all over my face. I don't get the streaks with this either. Really, really love these. So that wraps up all my current favorite products for the month of December, guys. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have been loving. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and I will see you next time.